Hey, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome back to another Chelsea news video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about current Chelsea players and what they're doing, contracts and loans and all that lot, updates on Chelsea targets and new price tags which will give you hope as well as ripping certain hope away from you. And maybe a couple of things in between, a lot to get into today, so let's do it. Oh yeah, if you've not yet subscribed to Football Therapy, I'd urge you to do so. Please subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon, like the video, go on, help me out. Let's get into it. Right, let's start on a Galactico level story. And that is Danny Drinkwater. <laughs> yeah, let's get the admin out of the way. Danny Drinkwater has come back to Chelsea and Chelsea are looking to ship him out on loan straight away. You can understand this from a Frank Lampard perspective. He's had no time really to train with him. Doesn't really know what he wants out of his team in terms of his footballing philosophy. He's been causing trouble a little bit where he goes. God bless him. So he's like, no thank you, I don't want Danny Drinkwater hanging about, understandably. Aston Villa want him though, they want a few players to come in and bolster their chances of staying in the league this season. But the thing is, if they want Danny Drinkwater, they will apparently have to pay all of his wages while he's there on loan. And that's £110,000 a week. 110,000. I mean, he's just not doing anything. I mean, fair enough, man. Danny Drinkwater, he's won the Premier League and the greatest fairy tale of all time in football. Now he's just balling, cruising around, drinking, getting paid 110 grand a week. I mean, fair enough, he tried to play. I think he probably wanted to get into the Chelsea side pre-season, but it just wasn't going to happen. Damn, see, Chelsea are reluctant to pay certain players of certain money, but then you look at Danny Drinkwater on 110k, just give Tammy Abraham whatever he wants, do you know what I mean? But anyway, that's Drinkwater out of the way. So before we get into like transfer news of new players coming into Chelsea, let's also talk about another Chelsea player that is looking like he's about to pen a new deal. And that is absolute superstar in the making, right back slash midfielder slash right mid slash right winger. Reese James. As Reese James got into the team and was being rotated in, he opened up contract talks with Chelsea to renew. It's the obvious thing to do. But the, uh, I don't know, the contract negotiations hit a snag and they had stopped. But I think they have started again since his absolute beast performance against Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup. I think everyone recognises what an amazing player he is. And apparently, it's imminent the announcement of his new five year deal, which is superb news for Reese James, Chelsea Football Club, and Chelsea fans, and indeed England fans, because this guy is going to be an absolute beast of a player moving forward. Right, using said Nottingham Forest match as a reference point, let's move on. Chelsea's 2 0 win at home against Nottingham Forest was a good performance in the most part, certainly the first half, but what was really evident is Chelsea are struggling in the striker position behind Tammy Abraham. Michy Batshuayi got the full 90 minutes in this game, which I think was very, very telling. And the fact that Giroud didn't get a sniff, to me, essentially indicates, yes, he's being shipped out this month. Pointless playing him for like 20 minutes against the championship side in case he gets injured, then you can't loan him and then he'll be frustrated, Chelsea will be frustrated. I mean, sell him, not loan him. And uh, Do you see what I mean? So really that's why Michy Batshuayi got the full 90 minutes, who was so, so, so poor, really reiterating the fact how Chelsea don't have anything decent behind Tammy Abraham at the moment. Now, if you know me and you know my channel, you'll know that I don't slag off. Michy Batshuayi is an excellent finisher, two-footed, very good attitude, but generally in terms of how he's playing or how Frank Lampard wants to utilise him or his form or whatever, everything put together, it really does look like it's not working at the moment under Frank Lampard. So whether he's happy to be pushed down to third choice or just back up for a little bit or wants to leave the club is yet to be seen, but it does look like Chelsea absolutely need to bring someone in behind Tammy Abraham, who's not only going to be that option, but will put pressure on Tammy Abraham and make him raise his game up. I guess. But at the same time, like Joe Cole said, not a massive, massive name that's going to immediately undermine Tammy Abraham and prevent him from signing a new contract, like a Timo Werner. So there's loads and loads of names going around, Moussa Dembele recently, but obviously the most recent to surface and go round the news articles is Gabigol. Gabriel Barbosa is looking to make a move and ideally back to Europe, with the two names or two main destinations being touted as 
West Ham United and Chelsea Football Club. Now obviously Barbosa plays for Flamengo was on loan there from Inter Milan but it doesn't really seem like he'd return to Inter and a move would look to be made especially considering Antonio Conte has spent a lot of money. Inter will grasp every opportunity that they can to make some money back after forking out so much for the Italian coach, especially seeing as he might want more reinforcements this January. Now, news outlets are reporting that Barbosa's agents would prefer Gabby Gold to go to Chelsea rather than West Ham. Now, you'd understand that for a multitude of reasons because of the profiles of clubs. Maybe the agent fee will be high, I don't know, or he'll get more money. Or maybe it'll just be better for his portfolio that he sold a player to Chelsea, all that kind of stuff. Now, it looks like he might be really, really affordable. There's a price going around saying £20 million. And another figure has been circulating around the news outlet saying £17 million. Right, alarms are going off immediately. That seems like really, really good value considering. Now, I think the 20 million has got reduced to 17 million when Olivier Giroud enters the story. Giroud has been heavily, heavily linked with a move to Inter this January to bolster Antonio Conte's squad in his title charge. So things are starting to link together now with an, perhaps a Gabby goal, Olivier Giroud switch. The old Giroud switcheroo. <laughs> anyway, so 17 million pounds plus Olivier Giroud, so he makes up the three million for the six months left on his contract. That could be really, really good. Although Gabby Gol has struggled in Europe before, he's gone away scored loads and loads of goals he was widely recognized as one of the best products to come out of Brazil for a long time and he is still only 23 so him arriving seems like the perfect sort of caliber and tier of player to like I said put pressure on Tammy Abraham without really undermining him you're not bringing in a team Moverna that's definitely gonna want to play every single game but you're bringing in a very talented player and still a young player who's used to scoring loads and loads of goals you get Giroud out the door you get him to a good club everybody's happy you don't spend much money seems perfect to me still this is just news going around the media outlets at the moment we'll have to wait for some more stronger stronger evidence as things go along and of course as new information comes out I will keep you lot updated, so make sure you do swing by football therapy every single day. Right, finally, I want to give you guys an update on Jadon Sancho. Chelsea are heavily linked to Jadon Sancho and are actually the favourites in terms of the next club he moves to, probably in the summer. I think they're 7-2 to two Chelsea, which is above Manchester United and all the other clubs that are apparently in for him. Allegedly, Chelsea were priced out of a January move because his cost was going to be over 120 million just for the player but the agent fee would also be a large amount too the total fee coming in at over 140 million pounds now it's been reported that Chelsea were absolutely happy to break their transfer record on Jadon Sancho this January but their transfer record is 72 million so maybe they were happy to go up to 80 90 who knows even 100 million pounds but when he was priced at 120 Chelsea lost interest or certainly immediate interest and when the agent fee came on top to make it over 140 million pounds, Chelsea were probably like, yeah, okay, no, mate. Although the Blues are massive admirers of his, they still are probably looking at the objective factors of this transfer, his age, his experience. Sure, he's demonstrating immense ability and talent, but when you buy something, you want certain amounts of insurance, and when you double your transfer record, you know, 70 to 140 million, Chelsea, especially in January as well, Chelsea absolutely dropped interest for the moment. So that's interesting. Chelsea, of course, are interested in the young winger, but we'll have to see moving forwards in the summer and beyond, especially seeing how their front line is working together. Obviously, the re-emergence of Callum Hudson-Odoi and him potentially finding form again will be a huge factor. Christian Pulisic's fitness, if Willian goes or stays, it does look like Pedro might be gone as well, especially with how he came off. In that game against Nottingham Forest, he looked disappointed. He got a big round of applause after a poor performance. I think that might have been a good buy. But rather interestingly, in that match as well, Frank Lampard played Tarek Lamptey in the front three, and he looked very, very good indeed. So maybe Lampard's got different options up in his head, and he probably feels safe in those positions at the moment. Who knows, he's even played Mason Mount in the front three a bunch of times. So if Mount plays in the front three more, Lamptey does a little bit more, Hudson, Adoy, Pulisic are all looking good on the wings, and who knows, maybe by the time the summer comes, Chelsea will be like, we don't necessarily need to buy Jadon Sancho, you know, whatever. <laughs>
that would be disappointing because he's an excellent player and obviously it would be a Galactico signing. But, you know, if, if it's going to be a waste of money, Chelsea need to be wary of that. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on everything I've said in this video of all the players, transfers, deals, etc. Get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts and opinions. Remember to subscribe to my other channel. The link is in the top of the description. And come follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. You all enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.